Hey guys, Lovey Freeman here, and today we got a save game uh, from our boy on the uh, subreddit over here, Mimosh27. And he says, I am stuck with the Russian war. The war has raged on since 1939, and I destroyed Internationale in Japan, but I cannot manage to break the Russian front line. I've deployed 40 with heavy tank divisions, air superiority is mine, but I could not break the front. How can I win? And he's uh, sent me the save game over here to uh, see if we can help him out. Uh, so this is a file, and it looks like we're playing a regular difficulty, and of course we're playing as uh, German Empire here. So we'll go in and we'll take a look. Uh, I do know from other discussions over here, it looks like there may be some supply problems on the uh, on the front line, and we'll see how we go. He also mentioned he has a whole lot of uh, Allied troops. Uh, presumably those are puppet guys he's pulled, and he's uh, you know he said he's tried to alleviate the supply situation by pulling them off the front line and dumping them elsewhere. Uh, and I do know that the army organization looked a little bit messy when I saw the screenshots. So let's uh, all right. So we're locked in here. We have a pretty massive army over here, which uh, I think I think maybe some of these are request forces divisions. Yeah, it looks like it looks like this is the stack he's talking about, where he says uh, he's requested these guys and he's pulled them away from the front line to stop the allies from flooding in. Which is, you know, that's a, that's a reasonable measure to take if you're having supply problems in the front line. Uh, let's just go through and see what we have to work with over here, going from the uh, you know, start. So we have Wilhelm three. He's got no trait. We still have Imperial surrender. Uh, we restored the Bundesrat, so it gives us our political power gain. We did have renewed militarism. It's a nice national spirit to have. We went with the military industrial complex route, which is perfectly reasonable. Uh, we have investments in Egypt for 1% sea goods, and we have a uh, grade and steel program. So it looks like we've done quite a few of the focuses against us buffs. I'm not seeing the Argentinian trade deal over here, so uh, maybe I'm not sure what happened with that. Hmm. It's uh, maybe a bit unlucky that so you didn't get that. Or maybe you tried to force harsher terms on them and they uh, they went to the Entente instead. It should be unfortunate. Uh, occupations. We have a lot. We are on civilian oversight. And just as... Uh, it, looks like you're, it looks like you're fine anyways with most of this resistance here. You have uh, basically nothing except for some of the stuff in Russia. Uh, it is smart to set this to local police force, at least on the Russian front, it'll help you take less damage and use less troops for your garrison. Not that this is, looks like it's going to be a problem for you anyways, but uh, you have local police force available, you might as well use it. Yeah, it is uh, starting to rain pretty hard too. Alright, so we're on extensive conscription, which is good, you don't really want to go higher than that. Export focus is mostly fine, and we have war economy, uh, which is also fine. We could even go total mope with this amount of manpower that we have. Uh, we are market liberal with 53% party popularity, which is a pretty decent amount to have. Uh, we did restore the Bundes Rat, so our political power gain is probably pretty obnoxious, and we can see we've got a stockpile of 2k. Uh, we have Paul von Leder Vorbeck, and this guy is, he costs you 3% sea goods, which kind of sucks in early game, but he gives you some very nice buffs otherwise uh, for your army and your factory output. Uh, you know, so these guys, these guys are fine over here. Uh, you didn't go with the SPD though, which is like a little bit odd. Like usually when you come down this path, you want to do the Embrace the FAUD. But we'll look at your focuses later. Some military staff, we have School of Mass Combat. Uh, this is probably not the doctrine you want to be on, or not the army command you want. You've got this much accruable population anyways. And uh, if you're trying to make a breakthrough, tanks are probably what's going to be doing it for you. So you probably want to swap these guys out for like some armor guys. And static defense. Yeah, we're not looking to be on static defense. We're looking to be doing more offensive things. So these guys should be switched out. We have more than enough political power to do so. Uh, Navy is not going to be really relevant for killing Russia. I mean, you could do some meme invasions if you wanted to, maybe up here. But I don't think that would be necessary. And then we have uh, Naval Aviation Doctrine, which is, you know, sure, fine. Uh, companies, we have uh, DMAG over here, which is probably not the company that you want to research in single player. Uh, the AI tends not to build a whole lot of hard units, so hard attack and piercing tend to be much, much, uh, they have to be less useful than soft attack and reliability or speed or some other stuff. Uh, again, navy is not going to matter too much, but we've got the carrier deck size, so I don't know if we're for carrier build, maybe. Uh, we've got for the close air support, and we have uh, infantry equipment, and we have crap. So yeah, I don't know, that looks, that looks okay. I wouldn't, I wouldn't pick this company, but otherwise that looks fine. Uh, having the higher soft attack in your tanks would probably help us out more trying to push this front line. I am going to go ahead and swap these guys out. We're going to go with uh, School of Maneuver. This will give us 10% more attack in our tanks in addition to division speed. Uh, so we'll go with the boy Manstein over here. And I think 
Uh, Armored Spearhead is not a bad one to pick. You'll get more you'll get more speed and you get an overall five percent extra attack. Also, the uh, Decisive Battle Doctrine guy that gives you ten percent uh, division attack total is also pretty good. I think we're just gonna go for uh, we'll go for a Decisive Battle to get the ten percent extra attack. Uh, so we'll make those changes. Decisions, uh, nothing really that's gonna help us. I see you don't have an intelligence agency, so I'm thinking maybe you don't have the lab resistance DLC. Uh, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fuck around with that just in case that's the case. Uh, so for researches, we're getting nukes. We have jet engines. Let's take a look at the tech tree that we have. So we've got all most of the radar techs, all the computing techs. We got some of this stuff. I mean, it's pretty late game, so you can kind of you have like extra research to throw around if you want to. Uh, we've got all the guns. We are not getting the 1946 night vision, which you probably do want to get. This will help you out with uh, the land night attack. Night attack is going to affect every combat, and it is a pretty hefty modifier, so you do want to pick that up. Uh, if you are, Even if you aren't going to play with mech, you definitely want to pick up the first mechanized tech to get the extra hardness on your motorized divisions. Uh, so not getting this is a bit of a mistake. Uh, special forces. I mean, if we're not using special forces, it's fine not to research that stuff. Uh, support companies, we, we have engineers, we have MP, we have maintenance companies. Uh, MP, what is our cavalry division? Is there MPs in this? There are, okay. So I mean like that's that's reasonable to do. If you are going to use the MPs, you do want to expand this out to 50 width. Uh, you'll get more value. Uh, the MP is a force multiplier on your division, so the bigger the division you have, the more value you get out of your MP company. Uh, but we are going to have supply problems on the Eastern Front, so logistics technology is pretty important, so not researching logistics is a bit of a mistake. Uh, field hospitals are generally worthless too, so like this was, uh, if you, instead of researching this, you picked up a few of these instead, that would have probably helped out a bit. Armor, we've researched all the lights, all the mediums, and all the heavies, but we do not have modern tanks, so this is also a bit of a mistake. Generally you want to pick, uh, if you want to use light tanks and get them in to use volunteers, picking this up is like only one research and it'll get you the tanks to get that early. Uh, that's fine. Uh, but if you want to invest into tank technology, which you should, which you should, you want to be doing either or. So it's like you're either picking heavies or you're picking mediums. Otherwise you're wasting a lot of research. Uh, and you definitely want to make sure that you're getting modern tank uh, as soon as it's available, preferably before. So not having modern tank is also like a bit of a mistake. You should have been transitioning towards modern already. Uh, yeah, not much to say about that. So for research is uh, anti-air. I'm not sure if you're planning on contesting air or not, but if you are, if you are going to contest air, like this probably isn't as high a priority as something like modern tanks or some of the logistics companies we looked at. Uh, rocket artillery, we haven't seen your doctrine yet, but if you're on superior firepower, you do want to get rocket artillery so you can double dip on the soft attack support company bonuses, and anti-tank is worthless, so it's good that you didn't research that. Uh, so we did go mobile warfare, so I guess in, you know, in light of that decision, it's fine not to do the uh, rocket artillery, but for some reason, we've opted for desperate defense instead of battle of annihilation. And... Uh, you pretty much always, unless you're forced onto this path because you absolutely need the extra 5% approval population, you pretty much always want to come down here and pick Battle of Annihilation. You get a, you get Tank Org, you get Infantry Org. Org is a good stat to have, and you get like a substantial amount of organization for your tank units and recovery rate coming down this path. So it's like coming, going down Desperate Defense if you didn't need the manpower is definitely a waste. It's definitely a mistake, and that is going to hurt your effectiveness of your units on the field. Uh, these stats don't increase your division stats at all, they just give you more guys. And the uh, guerrilla tactics uh, is a defender tactic, so it's not going to help you out in offense at all. Uh, so, not great. Uh, Navy stuff, uh, I think there might be a DLC issue over here, because it, it doesn't look like there's anything researched, so I'm thinking maybe maybe you don't have man the guns. Uh, yeah, we got that. We got the first base strike doctrine over here to help out your naval bombers, so maybe you went for a naval bomber strat, in which case that's reasonable. Oh, we have all the planes research, and you did say that you have the uh, you have air superiority, so that makes sense. Uh, so we have all the all the plane types we could want appropriate for the period. Jets tend to be a little bit a little bit mediocre in my opinion compared to the fighter threes. So the agility is worse. Uh, they do have lots of range. That's really not going to be holding you back. Uh, this over here, I, I don't usually pick this, but like there's some stuff down here on the doctrine tree, like the air superiority efficiency. 
Uh, you probably don't need these last three ones over here, but you definitely the ground support and the air superiority you definitely want to get. Uh, so you are uh, you being behind on this compared to some of the other stuff that you've researched, like those extra tanks. This is definitely a mistake. Uh, this is uh, this is fine. And industry, we have yeah. This is this is also fine to see you've opted for dispersed industry. And with the growth, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, it's always a toss up for me for this stuff over here. Like if you get the one hundred percent retention, that's very nice for. Uh, flipping your stuff around or I'm not sure if it's 100% but it's pretty damn high uh, production efficiency growth is like you know I guess also always okay but uh, in 1943 at the time you get the production efficiency growth unless you're building a whole lot more military factories uh, you know you're you're probably already pretty close to your production to cap anyways and the more and the retention I think is maybe a little bit more useful uh, anyways, your research looks mostly okay. Just not having modern tank kind of sucks, and your your some of the choices you made with your land doctrine were uh, a little bit subpar. And that's gonna hold you back. Uh, resource situation looks fine. Uh, we're building nuclear reactors, which uh, I guess is okay. But if we're having supply problems, uh, what does our infrastructure look like? Yeah, not not building an infrastructure corridor out over here if we're having supply issues is uh, is also a mistake. So you, you, I see you've got some queued up over here in White Ruthenia. Uh but you want to do is probably start building up in Bradenburg and getting yourself like an actual supply corridor because you will get bottlenecked. So you probably want to do that, and you like you don't really need nukes uh, to win the game most of the time. Our civilian industry also feels like a little boy. You know, I don't know what's what's our what's our ratio of factories here. Uh, Civis to mill. We have 118. Yeah, you know, you know it's fine. I think that's uh, good enough anyway. So I'll start focusing on building the building up some of this infrastructure. And uh, let's check our focuses. Uh, so we went for the uh, democracy in Prussia, which is you know fine if you want to do that. Although I think if you want to come down this path, uh, it's Usually, I think it's probably better to get the SPD. You can still pick market liberals if you come down this way, and you will still get the negative five percent consumer goods and the you know the five percent factory output you get from the Christian trade unions. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I like that. Uh, aftermath of Black Monday. So you came down this path, which is you know this is also fine. We went for the Pact Forgotten, which is also fine. Uh, yeah, we did the uh, military industrial complex and the Panzer factory, which is fine. Uh, I don't know if like we really needed all this, some of the stuff over here, but I mean, you know, if you got nothing else to do, look game with your focuses. You know, this is fine. Probably don't need synthetics at this point. And we went through the uh, yeah, this all looks fine. And you did the first oil must flow, sure, whatever. Yeah, so I don't know. This looks this looks fine, and we have. Naval production right now, like I said, I don't think our navy is going to help us out that much, but we would like to get infrastructure built faster, so we'll do that. Uh, productions, we've got 35 factories on guns, which is, I'm not sure what our logistics are right now. Might be a little bit too much on guns, but you know, at this point in the game, it usually doesn't matter that much. We've got uh, 15 factories and artillery, so maybe we're using some sort of artillery in our template. 7-2 or something, which I don't like. Uh, 10 factories in support equipment, 25 factories in Fighter 3, uh, 10 factories on CAS, 15 factories on TAC bombers, a bunch of naval bombers, some carrier fighters. Uh, 20 on light tank 3. Uh, in 1946, I'll have to look at your templates. It seems like a little bit weird. I would maybe have at this point in the game, like looking at your logistics stockpile over here, I'd maybe drop some some of these off guns and artillery and build more planes. Uh, and I don't know, the light tanks is maybe a little bit questionable, but we do have quite a few military factories. And you said you're making heavy tanks, so I'm not seeing any though. So you're building improved light ship hull. Uh, I'm sure, whatever, it's a, it's a cheap destroyer. We got some cruiser subs, we got some convoys. Are building battle cruisers. Uh, it's an interesting choice for your navy, but whatever. Like I said, I'm not really too okay. So there's our heavy tanks. 70 factories and heavy tanks. So I'd say overall your production looks like mostly okay. Like so, there might be some, might be a few tweaks I would make, but uh, it's certainly a lot of heavy tanks. It looks like you have a huge stockpile of these two. You're not making a variant though. So one of the problems that you're gonna have is that your variant, like if you look over here, like you start at base. 
uh, was a base, uh, was it 46? And you can get up to 66%. So you can get like almost like an extra, was it like one, one third soft attack on there? And you didn't do that. It's like your your stats of your tanks aren't going to be nearly as good as they could be otherwise. Or I was thinking soft attack. Sorry, your hard attack is much better. Your soft attack is uh, maybe you know a little bit a little bit less of an increase, like 10, 16 percent. You still definitely want to do the. Uh, you still definitely want to do it. And we have army experience, so we'll spend some over here to improve our variant. And we have like such a huge stockpile list, anyways. We could uh, maybe convert some over. Right, we'll just we'll just we'll just produce it. It'll be fine. All right, so we have just a little bit of cleanup over here. We're not using militia. We're not using this template. We do have some Panzer divisions in the field, which you've modified to be twenty width. Uh, the problem with doing this is that like, you see your organization is like super low, and like the stats that you get off of uh, off of the motorized artillery tend to not be so great. Motorized artillery really sucks in terms of the cost you pay versus the soft attack that you get. Like if we even go with like, uh, I would probably change this to like a six four. Yeah, and we have twenty divisions of them. So like I think twenty factories on light tank for only twenty divisions of light actual light tanks is maybe a little bit much. We are in mobile warfare. Let's actually go for a. Uh, let's swap the cell. We'll go with a seven three maybe. Oh, we don't need field hospitals. Uh, light armor recon will help you move faster though. And uh, probably, probably you want logistics. Uh, so a lot of those guys, a lot of the 20 with light tanks. And, you know, that's like, they're useful to have at the stage in the game anyway, so that's fine. Uh, we have a 10 with uh, maintenance companies, which is uh, okay. Can we afford logistics in this? Yes, so we'll put logistics into that to help with our supply situation a bit. Infantry division with a light tank recon. This is... This is a good idea early game to get the extra armor bonus and hard attack if you're going to try and beat up on weaker countries. But late game, this is just kind of a little bit fugly. Uh, I do not like that. Uh, so I think I'll probably be getting rid of this template. Uh, guard infantry division. Like we don't have any of this anyways. We'll just cancel that. Uh, we do have some motorized. This is 7-2 motorized. Uh, yeah, you know, again, this is like this is like an okay template, but you don't really a, a motorized division is not really a line division. The the idea isn't really to have them sit there and hold the line. You're using them to do things where their speed is advantageous, like to rush victory points and stuff like that, uh, which usually doesn't require to have or which usually doesn't require them to have artillery. Uh, field hospitals is also like a, a bit of a waste. I would either go with a 10 width or a, tw or a 20 width solid uh, solid uh, motorized, no artillery. Like I said, motorized artillery tends to blow chunks for the cost you pay for it. Uh, but we will uh, we'll keep this the way it is for now. We've got the artillery for it, so whatever. Cav division, this is our uh, MP. I would expand this to 50 width, but I'm not sure we also have to do yet, so that's fine. We've got the colonial template, which you don't have any of, so we'll get rid of that. Uh, Marines. Uh, it's concerning that you have some of these because this is not a good template. I know it's one of the ones that you start out with. Uh, we don't have any Mountaineers. We have the heavy tanks. Uh, so you know, again, the same same kind of problem you have with this template over here is like your org is going to be garbage, and you're not really getting a whole lot, uh, you know, from these from these. Uh, Toad artillery divisions. Like, if you want to go for like a high ratio unit, uh, you know, maybe we do want to on this point. Uh, we'll get rid of this. We got logistics. It looks fine. It's gonna use a default symbol. Uh, you go with like a fifteen five. Uh, you could also go even lower than that, like twelve eight or thirteen seven. But uh, you know, we'll, we'll try the fifteen fives here. I mean, usually they all tend to perform well, and the fifteen fives will give us higher higher uh, stacked attacks. Uh, so we'll do that. I guess this will get us a, uh, you know, quite a bit, lar quite a larger amount of organization and hit points, uh, which, which is important to make sure that you can actually keep on fighting. Uh, maintenance company, I, I did increase the reliability in our variant. Uh, usually you don't need like maintenance company. I saw you have that. I think on your infantry guys too. The maintenance company. Uh, the maintenance company is something that you pick if you're trying to like steal equipment or you have like really expensive equipment. Uh, that you're trying to protect, like mechanized, you cannot increase the uh, reliability of. 
Uh, you don't really need the maintenance companies if you have stockpiles of hundreds of thousands of equipment. You don't need to steal shit from the AI. Uh, I think that's maybe a little bit of a waste, but it's like not not huge. And what else we have in here that like uh, logistics? Look, we got more than enough shit for everything. Uh, so this is fine. Uh, it looks like we have 3K planes in reserve that we haven't deployed yet, and 3.7K fighters. So we might want to use those. Uh, depending on the circumstance. All right. Uh, so overall, not bad. I, I think uh, I think your tank templates. You need a little bit more motorized. I think you need to get rid of the motorized artillery uh, to make sure you have enough work. But overall, this isn't too bad. And like I'm looking at the supply map over here. I, I guess I probably haven't started the game because hasn't calculated anything yet. All right. So how bad is it? I mean, this this sucks up here, but we also don't really have troops up there, so nothing. You know, whatever. That sucks for the AI. It's not really a problem. Uh, where else is red? I mean, there's like a little bit over here. Thirty one over twenty eight. Ten over nine. Like I think overall, like you did. It looks like you did a pretty good job managing your supply situation. Like all things considered, this doesn't seem that bad. Uh, let's take a look over what we have for our armies over here. So right away we have this stuff over here. I'm just going to swap those over for like regular infantry divisions. Uh, same with this uh, marine division. We don't need those. All right. So that army's sorted. Where are the where are these guys? Uh, what I'm going to do here is change the color so I can tell who's who. And everybody in this stack is going to be red. I'm seeing you don't want to mix your armies up like this either, so we'll have to come back and pull uh, some of these out. Yeah, and you've got so many divisions over here, you can't even see the new armies. And you were from. You're over here. And what else do we have? We've got some more trucks. We'll put in this this division over here. You're motorized. You want to use, like I said, to do speedy things. You don't want them sticking with your line holders. Uh, so it looks fine. We'll just make all these guys red, so I can tell where they are. We'll make the other line blue. It doesn't look like you've stacked front lines either, which is nice. It's very uh, disgusting to see. I would also recommend, like, if you're going to use your army just to stay on one front like this, just to use the shift click field marshal order. And these guys, what do we got here? So we have some more trucks. Uh, let's see, we have quite a few trucks. We got a bunch of these light tanks. So some more light tanks. And this is uh, Manstein, who's also like a pretty good general. Uh, we might want to keep him in the field for now, but I think if we have to deal with some army reassignment times, we'll just deal with some army reassignment times. So we'll get our tanks together. I'll send you a couple more tanks. You don't like, so right away I'm seeing like a big mistake that you've done here is that you've stuck all of your units kind of together and stuck them all on the same front line. And I think that's one of the reasons why you're having a lot of problems uh, pushing is that you're not using your units effectively. I can tell kind of like just from the way that your army is organized, this is going to be the case. Uh, okay, so what do we have over here? Do we have any availability? We'll put you into this army. Put five divisions over there. Put one more division over there. And this guy, we got GERD. Uh, maybe we want someone who's not GERD in this slot, though. If you have anyone who's got the uh, the skilled staff or to get the extra army, which will help us with this large friend line, I'm pretty sure we do. We might also want someone who's got the, uh, uh, what is it, the, the logistics wizard trait as well. Tell us all their supplies. Yeah, this guy, this guy's perfect. It's a... Uh, this guy, we have no command power though, why is that? More ground crews. Okay, so I'm going to get some command power back so we can promote that guy. He's going to be an infantry field marshal. Uh, your mission efficiency is like good enough. I think you don't really need to worry about some of these things. Get some of that back. And that was this guy over here. Yeah, you're up. Why did I not promote this guy? Uh, 
It's good. Well, I should be able to promote him even though he's assigned. And this is just a garrison. So, like, I'm going to throw your garrison into a new theater. Just so they're not clogging the screen. What's this? Where are you? you guys, like, on this fallback line over here. These guys are, I don't know what they're doing. This is another garrison. Yeah, they are. Throw those guys over there. Now this is some front line up over here. So like I mean, you know, this is this is okay. It looks like what is what's in this army? You've also got Gunther over here doing that as a combined arms expert. Like probably you want this guy in your trucks. So I think there's like a bit of a general assignment issue. Uh, these guys are all. Uh, I know we're getting supply ganked over here too, like a little bit, I think. In Manchuria. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to put these guys in a different front. This will be uh, east. And I think you could have got some better value out of that one general, but you know, overall it's fine. And these guys over here, it looks like you're not really using them for anything anyways. So like I'm just going to unassign this general. And you can put, let's put these guys in the... Uh, Maybe the allies, or we just disband them, maybe. I'll just, I'll just dump them in this theater for now. And I wanted to replace this guy with uh, this guy over here. We get ourselves the uh, level 5. So we get the extra delegator. So you can throw more guys in front if you want to, and we'll get logistics wizard. I thought we'd need a bit more there, but it looks like we don't. Like we've got, we've got the. Uh, looks like this is our entire front line this way, anyways. Uh, so we're gonna delete this, and we'll just go with a shift clicked order. And I think we were like holding right up from Petrograd down over this way, and we're leaving the shitty supply zone to our allies. Yeah, so we'll do. We'll go like we'll go like that. And that usually will make your army like a little bit, uh, you don't have to deal with the different armies on the different fronts, they'll just treat it like one big infantry staff, which is kind of the behavior that we're looking for. Alright, so, what else do we have over here? These guys and more garrisons. Get them out of the way. And it looks like these guys are your heavy tanks over here, and you've got Werner von Blomberg on them, which is also not the best choice. Uh, we'll get our offensive guys into a, an offensive army here. I usually like to use black for this. Uh, so we have, who do we have in our generals list here that's going to be good? Like, I'm not sure how you've leveled them up. So we have Manstein's usually a good target for your tank general. Uh, you haven't learned armor officer on him yet, though. So, like, that's, that's a bit unfortunate. I guess probably Gadarian, if you haven't ground out a specific tank general. Gadarian's probably the guy for the job. And uh, unfortunately we don't have a whole lot of command power available to promote people. Right, uh, I think Von Blomberg, he is a career officer. Well, we'll just have to live with what we've got. Uh, we'll go with uh, who's got our highest attack over here. Wilhelm von Prussian, I guess. Sure, you're up, bud. And he can also get Logistics Wizard, which will be excellent to keep us in supply. So we'll just, we'll just roll with him. And let's see here. Alright, so if you want to reassign a general, or like an army or whatever, without having to go on reserves, what you can do is this. So we'll give these guys to Gadarium, we'll give these guys to Warner, and we'll put Warner in this stack. Uh, I did fuck up there because I was I needed to put someone else in Wilhelm von Preussen stack. But I think he was about to be reassigned anyway, so he was going to be in reserve. So we'll assign these guys to the front line, and then we'll do this. So we'll have our boy Wilhelm there, and what else we have here? We have. Three random infantry divisions with their own general. 
I'm not sure what you're playing with with doing to do with these guys. I think we'll just chuck for them, chuck them one of our garrison stacks for now. And we have also in this army we have our trucks. I also want to split these guys in half too. Even well, we'll see. That'll be. We'll do this. We'll do this for now. And I usually like to make these guys uh, like a white color. So these are your mobile units. And I'll make the. Uh, I'll give them this gear symbol, and the tanks can be like a gray. So for this army, we'll just pick another. Like this guy is. This guy's probably fine. I need some truck generals. And like I said, unfortunately, like, yeah, this guy's fine. Unfortunately, our guy that has combined arms expert is like a little bit preoccupied. You could also use Feder von Bach for your for your main tank general. He, he'll be pretty strong, like in lieu of uh, Guderian. He's Kessel rig. With uh, sure Hoppner. All right, and for for these units that you want to micro, what you can do is you can take your guys and give them a garrison order to a neutral country. That you don't have military access to, like so. We'll go with the uh, state of Peru here. So have you got you guys garrison Peru, and these guys will also garrison Peru, and this will allow them to be microed, but you can still get planning. So you do this, then you take a field marshal order, and you can draw a front line with a defensive line, and then when your units stand next to this, they will get planning, even though they do not have, uh, even though the field marshal order is empty, you can still get planning from it if you have a garrison order. So that's just a nice trick to know to keep yourself. Did this actually fire with the offensive line here? I think it might have got blocked by impassable terrain. That's fine. It's just a nice handy trick to have. All right, I think for this, the thing that's gonna help us out most immediately is probably night vision. So we'll pick that up. And we gotta start looking, we've got our army organized. These guys might need to uh, have some manpower, but that's otherwise okay. And let's look where we have supply available to push from. So these guys use 3.82 supply each. So you gotta be careful where we throw them and how many of them we take. Uh, this is about 30 supply worth of divisions. So you have this one over here is uh, 68 supplies. We could put some guys over here. You also have a 63 over 96 in this tile. Uh, you also want to look at your terrain when you're trying to push in. And like marshes and forests are like kind of like a little bit shit. Going through Wyrathenia is always usually a bit of an issue. Uh, we are over the big river in a couple places. Like I think we've got some plains we can work with over here. Uh, if you come up from Moscow through Ukraine over here, this usually is like a pretty easy path because you have a lot of you have a lot of uh, plain styles that you can kind of roll with. We have supply down here though. 24 to 76, 11 out of 12. And unfortunately, yeah, like you said, a lot of these units are allied. They're not our own, so we can't force them to fuck off. This is also one of the dangers of calling in all of your allies too, is you can get kind of supply locked. Uh, maybe this tile over here is our best chance at the supply zone. It's gonna have these guys go over here, and because we're so or we're so comp supply constrained, but it looks like we have a bunch of our mobile units over here, anyways. We'll try and make a play over here. How's our air looking? Our air is great. Where are our casts? Coordinated close air support. Okay. We'll assign those to support our heavy tanks. So we don't have to micro them. So how's our airbase situation look like? We're also going to want to build some airbases. Uh, having planes kind of is pointless if you don't have the airbases for them to fly out of. Uh, they do build really fast though, so that's nice. And we do have a couple level tents. Uh, you also want to make sure you upgrade the range on your cast so you have enough distance to strike. So let those guys go into position. Alright, 
right, so let's do a quick supply check to make sure we're not going to get fuel fucked. We are 101 out of 96. We actually want to have some of these guys. I'm just going to pull them out for a bit, and we're just going to have them hang out over here then. It's uh, too, too many divisions. And this is Marsh. Marshes really suck. Hills aren't the worst. And we do have... Where's your mobile units over here? I think what we'll do is we'll have... I'll pull these guys out over this way. We'll just maybe use this one general. To hold our mobile for us. We'll try and push and get some victory points. So I think maybe this hills tile is the one we're going to work with. It's also February too, so you got to be careful for if you have uh, control or uh, what is it, the uh, winter effects. But you're also not ideal for the offensive. We'll move these guys up over here, anyways. for some planning bonus. Uh, fortunately our command power is a little bit uh, uh, we don't have much available and we need to wait for some manpower reinforcement anyway. So we'll go up to 5 speed for a bit. Uh, normally in this situation you'd want to use your staff office plan ability to get your planning faster. Although I'm not sure if that feature is DLC locked. We're going to pause here. See, the AI has made a mistake. And you want to make sure you take advantage of that when this happens. So the AI has left a few tiles open. So we'll make sure that we, uh, we pin some of these guys over here and we're going to drive through. This guy attacked this truck over here to stop it from moving. We'll see if we take this other tile as well. Trucks, unfortunately, are not the greatest division to have when trying to cross a river. But we might get lucky again over here. So if you see a situation like this, where we force this guy to fall back when he was low org, uh, what you want to try to do immediately is make sure you pin the units that can move on to that tile and then try and drive a unit across the river for free so you don't have to cross it when it's defended. So we'll see if we get lucky with that or not. Make sure we attack this guy too. Now it looks like we will be able to cross for free. Which is great. Unfortunately tracks are pretty slow in the forest so This guy coming that way. These guys, you don't need to pin that tile anymore. I'll send a truck over this way to make sure that we hold that corridor. And we'll keep on advancing that way. And yeah, it's unfortunate we have to come through this way because it's all forest. But you know, this is where our fucking supply is, so we'll make do. You know, we have an uh, we have an encirclement opportunity up over here too, so we're gonna go for it. We'll have you two guys come this way instead. And what's the supply like in this corridor? We have we're already like a little bit over, so we don't want to send in more units. It's just gonna compound our problems. And I would like to get across this river over here too, so I'm not gonna stop this guy from moving bring over some more tanks instead and uh, if I was quicker on the draw there and we're playing on slower speed I could have got that tile for free too these guys are a little orcs we can pressure them again
Yeah, we don't want these guys to walk in. It doesn't look like anybody's walking towards that tile anyways. So we'll go for it. Uh, where do you go? They're coming from over here. So we'll have some of these guys pin. Yeah, let's go pick up Modern Tank. I think at this point it's too late to transition, but we'll go for it anyways. And it looks like someone unfortunately got to that tile before we did. Uh, this is a lot of guys over there. We'll have these guys attack this tile here too. I don't want them reinforcing it. We can cycle attack that if we have to. We can try for that encirclement. And when you're doing those pinning attacks, like once you've got the tile that you're looking to get, you don't want to waste your trucks attacking if you don't need to. Pin there. You gotta watch too, like we are, we're getting a little bit supply fucked, but uh, we, we want to make sure that doesn't happen is that we start getting red fuel. Should be very bad. And we don't have improv experts, so crossing that river is going to be a little bit questionable. And it looks like we did force these guys to fall back, so what we're going to do is we're going to try and pin these guys down so they can't reinforce. So we got an encirclement. We don't need this attack anymore. Let's have... Uh, we don't need that attack anymore. Let's have you go ahead and reinforce this tile instead. And if these guys... We don't want, to, we don't want these guys to fall back. So what we could do is if we had command power, we could force attack. But we don't. So it's what it is. We may need to have this guy pin if our units get forced to fall back. Looks like this is stable. We'll have these guys stop attacking now. And once we have some more tanks into position, we'll just go kill these guys. And that might buy us some more breathing room. That should help with our supply situation coming in over here anyways. I don't think we'll actually need this tank there. And this is four tanks on one tile, which is like a little bit too much. We'll have a couple of these guys move back this way. I'm going to have them manually fall back, so that they'll, they'll fall back even though we're being attacked. And then we'll close this pocket up with our tanks. These guys are low orcs, so they sh they're in circles, so they shouldn't be able to put up that much of a fight. And it looks like the rest of our line are not making any moves. Uh, our oil situation looks like a little bit concerning. But I guess we can just order more. It looks like that's where a lot of our civilian factories is going. What's sucking up all of our oil? Navy. What are we doing with our Navy? Uh, these guys are on convoy raiding uh, with, with your death stack, which is something you can do. Uh, we're just going to put these guys on strike force instead, so they're not going to... We're going to get supremacy, but they're not going to suck up all of our fuel. Uh, you got to be careful when you order your navy to do non-strike force things with your capital ships, because you will, you will, you'll pay a lot of fuel for it. And if we can stop trading for so much oil, uh, then we can have more factories to build infrastructure and fix our supply situation a little bit quicker. Unfortunately, we're not over this river, which is a bit of a pain in the ass. So, we'll, like, I guess we push down this way instead. We've got some hills. So this is lots of marsh. There's a hill. There's like a pack of hills over here we can go for, which might be our easiest go. Maybe this hill style actually. 
We can attack this hill's tile with two tiles of our own. So I'll bring some more tanks over this way. We'll try and push down. Like I said, ideally we would have liked to go through Ukraine, but we don't have the supply in that zone to actually make a go of it. And we can trade for probably much less oil. Should give us more alliance for infrastructure. These guys attack here. It is unfortunately nighttime out at the moment. But we'll be able to do this anyways, and we'll have these guys pin. And we'll make sure we have our, our mobile stuff ready to go once we make this breakthrough. Have those guys pin there. I usually like to use light tanks for this, but we've got the motorized, so we'll. Uh, We'll deal with the motorized. Yeah. And then, you know, again, what we're gonna try and do is take the marsh tiles so that we don't get stuck having to fight them. So if we can occupy them while the enemy's low org, that would be very nice for us. So, uh, I guess we can't pin over here at the moment. I'll have that guy pin. Yeah, they got it's, it's just one isolated truck division in there at the moment, though. And we're starting to get a little bit yellow fuel. So, we'll have to take some more tiles to open up our supply corridor. I'll let these guys recover some organization and get some planning. How's our supply looking? Uh, 123 to 97, which is like a bit much. I might send some of these motorized out. You guys use 1.2 supply. These guys use 1.49. It's like the trucks are just not a great use of supply. I will transfer them over to this other general for the moment and we'll have these guys drive out this way. I uh, should also be researching logistics companies when we get the chance. Let's go for this attack here. Is this over river? No it's not. Excellent. Got pretty nice stats in these units. So you can maybe try and come over here and grab a meet up with this front line. Get ourselves a little bit more encirclement action going on. And it looks like we might be is this over a river? No. I think we can attack across down this way and uh, avoid having to push across the river entirely if we uh, if we do that. It's always uh, always a good idea. If we can. Where's our supporting tanks? You guys over this way. I'm pinning. So we're over here. That's great. Let's have a few more of our heavies drive over this way. And if this guy wants to run his organization, we can attack him from this side. We might be able to cross this river very cheaply. And it looks like we have another opening to take this tile over here for basically free. So uh, we'll pin and we'll do that. Uh, you guys... I want half of you to come over here. 
and support our breakthrough. Some more light tanks over there. Uh, this isn't that important that we paint anymore. It looks like there's a lot of pressure on this tile, so we'll keep on we'll keep on pushing over here. And then it looks like we're very close to getting another encirclement. If we're lucky, we might be able to carry some momentum across this river, maybe into that tile. Try that with these light tanks. So, unfortunately, our supply situation is a bit shit. You know, it is what it is. It's not. It starts to get really bad when your fuel runs out, though. Like these guys over here, these guys can't fight anymore. That's unfortunate. Let's uh, pull these guys out. We might have the uh, light tanks fall back entirely out of this. Maybe I send them over this way. Oh, we have. Or no, let's. Uh, there are guys on that tile. It's not free. Ooh, nice. You got an overrun there, even. This tile is, I guess, in a different supply zone, which is uh, interesting. That means there are other tanks will have supply when they land there. Uh, that guy hold. This looks okay for now. And we're basically just going to try and close this pocket up here. out to you. Uh, so we'll, we'll just restart this attack to make sure guys get in without having to pass the reinforced roll. Uh, when you decide you want to add units to a combat and you're on the offense, we'll make sure we pin this tile here so this guy doesn't walk in. When you want to add more units to a combat and you're on the offense, you can just start and stop the attack and then all every unit that you issue the starting attack order to will get in. Yeah, combat unit destruction. So cast is helping us out quite a bit. I might want to go to a lower ratio tank template just to maybe reduce our supply usage a little bit. Oh, I think cleaning this up here will help too. guy come over this way help out this tile. You don't need to pin that anymore. So this would be nice. This would be like a nice chunk of the army that we take out. Is this video getting right now? Where is it? Uh, where is it? Show me that. About an hour. Uh, so I think I'm probably not going to record too much more. But basically, you just keep on doing what you're doing. You make sure that you respect your supply zones, your micro breakthroughs, you try and carry momentum across rivers. And after you get a few of these encirclements, uh, you'll kill enough Russian units that their line will be thin enough that you can just kind of usually push them over. Uh, pretty easily with your tanks, just with like some right clicks. 
We'll have these guys come around this way so we're not attacking across the river. And that guy over here. So I think I'm going to close this pocket and then that should hopefully give you enough of a hint on what you're supposed to be doing for you to finish out this, uh, this uh, kill on Russia. Uh, and this this kind of over here is like why you don't want to call your allies to arms if you don't need them uh, just because they will they will clog your supply lines it can be extremely annoying trying to deal with it once that happens we had nuke there those guys weren't supposed to attack. But we'll just pin those guys just to make sure. I mean, that's, that's not really necessary. I just want to make sure that we do actually take this tile. Alright, so we got that. These guys can stop. And there's so much shit in the way, I can barely even see where our tanks are. Come across like that. We'll just uh, we'll close this up over here. What are the casualties like in this war, anyways? It's a pretty decent casualty count against Russia. Like your ratio is not too bad. Like I think, I think it was just your army control that's letting you down over here. But for the most part, your build looked okay, uh, in my opinion. Like obviously there are uh, there are a few places that could be used improvement, but you can definitely tell that you have like uh, you know a pretty a pretty decent understanding, anyways, of uh, how to do the macro elements of the game. I didn't see anything that here that was like too outrageous. You just need to micro your units better, organize your army better, and uh, look for your opportunities. Like, do you want to, I don't know, and we could maybe take Moscow. Maybe I'll take Moscow and then I'll just, uh, I'll, you know, I'll, uh, I'll post you the link to this uh, YouTube vid. And, uh, you know, you can, you know, just to, just to show, I think. Maybe we'll take Moscow. I don't think, I don't think that'll be maybe too, I don't think that'll be too much of an investment. Let's go up to four speed. Too much of a time investment on my part anyways. So we'll do it. Uh, who's got the red fuel? you guys stop don't want to use your tanks or red fuel this will just uh they're not effective at all when they're on red fuel unfortunately that's a marsh but you know they're also encircled so hooray for us we'll actually strat redeploy these guys over here because they're on red fuel they'll move at one kilometer per hour otherwise Also make sure that we are repairing our infrastructure that needs to be repaired. Construction repair helps a lot for this too, but you can't be on engineering and repair at the same time, unfortunately. And it looks like the AI wants to try and grind. I'm not sure if I trust the AI to close this pocket. I guess we just push through these forests. We can get another pocket over with these guys over here, I think, too. Our, our lines are pretty close to touching. And I guess we come through this gap because that's where the uh, gap in the rivers is. Do we have supply over here? No, no, we do not. We're going to level 10 infrastructure province. Gross. So those guys are going to be dead, like, basically right now. Cool story, and the AI can flood... The AI can send their troops in over there to deal with that. So you might not be able to use a whole lot of these tank divisions. Uh, just because of our supply situation. 
bad is it over here? Oh, geez, 21 out of 15. Gross. Pull these guys out. You know, at this point, we might even want to consider just, uh, the AI has enough infantry, we probably don't even need this stack here anymore. We'll have these guys maybe... Maybe do a fallback line. Just keep them out of our supply zone. And that's triggered the AI to do some offensives on us, which is, you know, whatever. It's fine. Alright, so you have a planes tile here, which is going to be excellent for us to uh, attack into. We have enough to get staff office plans, so we'll do staff office plan. Where are these guys at? These guys are... All those guys group up over here. And maybe we'll have our other stack of light tanks that we had. All those guys group up over there too as well, maybe. And let's uh, start pushing with our tanks here. It doesn't matter if we get pushed back a bit. That's fine. You know what we could even do? Is just, uh, just keep them away from our tanks. Are we... Do we not have milk like that? That's weird. It's weird that I can't draw on the Ukrainian border. What's up with that? They're a faction. Well, whatever. Yeah, there we go. Just send these guys over this way. Let's keep them away from our tanks. We got we have like more than enough AI supporting infantry to hold our lines anyways. You don't need to worry about it. What's going on over here? That is that unfortunately is over a fucking river. This is a very unfortunate, but it is what it is. At least at least we have Cass. Looks like we're close to making a breakthrough. We'll, uh, we'll chance getting some light tanks into position over here. Which hopefully doesn't immediately murder all of our supply. Let some of you guys come over here. You get across that river. Take this tile over here. Let that guy recover some org. This guy's low org too, so you can push him. Unfortunately, we can't use these infantry to pin these guys because they're AI infantry. It's a pretty big feel, it's bad, but it's uh, not a huge deal. Uh, we can pin over. Let's, uh, let's have this guy move this way, and we'll pin with these two tanks. attack this guy over here too and maybe at this point let's get some trucks into, into position to help us out too we'll have uh, some more of these guys come in too we got we got a gap let's see if we can exploit it Probably actually don't need to pin that anymore. We'll, we'll see if we can take some take some free space over here and try and uh, fuck up the AI a little bit. AI tends to respond very poorly when you start uh, zerging them out.
uh, do we have any more tanks? I think we had another stack of like heavy tanks over here, didn't we? I think maybe we want these guys now. We'll put them over on this front. It looks like we might have an encirclement opportunity over here too, so we'll try and kill these guys. See if we can thin out their numbers a little bit. These guys are kind of weak there. Is this across the river though? No, it's not. Let's see if we can uh see if we can take that tile even. Might be nice. We do have guys on this side, so let's uh, let's put some pressure on this tile. And if we had were if we had been able if we had been in a position to use all of our mobile units, we'd be able to we've been able to make something out happen here like a lot faster uh, than what actually did happen. But it is what it is. Let's move, uh, move these guys over here. Looks like that guy is retreating. Is uh, great. Uh, you know, what? let's let this guy walk out. Let's have these guys attack here. And when this guy decides to walk out, if his uh, if his line will take this tile for free. So have to remember to keep your eye on that. Too low work here. So we'll do that, and we'll have maybe this guy pin this tile. And our supplies are like absolutely atrocious over here. Make sure we repair in Smolensk. Oh, this is so greedy over here. Did we get it though? I didn't see a bubble. Did we get it? Get in there, get in there. Okay, we got this, we got this. Alright, so that's a bit of a tiny encirclement, but you know, it's still an encirclement. Oh, both with our, with our hardness. Maybe we just want to make mech anyways. I think, like I said, I think a transition might just take us too long at this point, though. Uh, logistics we want. Alright, we're very close to Moscow. Uh, 87 out of 80. 52 out of 22. So unfortunately our supply is getting like all sucked up over here. This is a reserve. We want to make sure we're repairing in reserve, which we are. And 
we're gonna get red fueled there pretty quickly. So we might want to start thinking about where else we want to uh, send our guys. Let's maybe just build some mechanized equipment, I guess. And we've got like lots of other shit. Uh, we can take some factories off of. I only like probably don't need naval bombers anymore at this point. And let's get let's get some more maybe some more casts instead of uh, attack bombers. And like we've got like more than enough heavy tanks. So, like a problem is supply. Uh, so we'll do that. And, you know, there's some weak looking tiles over here. Yeah, we just don't have any fucking fuel though. Alright, and this is 68 over... Move some of these guys out then. And I think we maybe want to make this play down here. And our light tanks probably also don't need to be there. So pull those guys out. Is this like its own supply zone? No, it's not. This is a Smolensk. We thought we were also repairing. All right, it's like we're kind of okay over here. We do have supply down on this side, like a bit. Let's uh, pull that back over there. Let's have these guys come down over to this side instead. We'll go down like that and we'll just put that into modern tanks. Again, transition hopefully soon. So we do have a little bit of supply problems over here, but you know it's not the worst. And maybe we can come up uh, a little bit this way. So we're gonna maybe go for we're gonna go for pocket on this side. We're already pushed up to the river over here, which is nice because that means we'll not have to make a crossing to get that. trucks over here to help us uh, help us out with that and uh, we'll take this free space here that we're getting Uh, see if we can get this guy to reinforce over here. Right, you know, 
let's actually uh let's actually go for the forest attack here so we don't lose any ground. We'll just uh, use our uh, use our trucks to just try and grab. You know, we might be able to truck to Moscow even. It's always hilarious to track people's victory points, isn't it? Maybe try and go for Orel. That's not gonna happen though. Maybe we'll be able to get this. Oh, it's it's a uh, yeah, it's not working. So we need to grab one of these two tiles. I mean, I guess I guess we try here. That's uh, not smart because that's going to give them more combat width to work with. So we'll have this guy drive back, and we'll attack them. Uh, we'll have these two guys go after this tile. I think we had some tanks over here too, right? You guys, you guys still no fuel on them though. But we're gonna get this pocket. It looks like we might get this pocket over here too. Those guys can stop doing that. It's uh, not worth it. All right, there we go. Another uh, another big pocket there. Uh, pin over here to make sure that we get this tile. Uh, no, I thought I thought we would be able to uh, get in there quicker than we did. That's uh, that's not gonna work. So that's just that's just a wasting of infantry orb for more or less nothing. A lot of these guys come over here and just help close this off instead. Delete that. We'll just reassign all these guys to this one front line. You guys have supply yet? Okay, we're good. Yeah, it's not so far to Moscow. Unfortunately, capping Russia takes a long ass time. If you do have the lab resistance DLC, then I would recommend that you uh, do collaboration government operations on them. And we're getting fuel fucked badly. So Kaluga and Rezev again, I think. I think at this point, like, we're gonna... Let's just go on construction repair. I think we're getting fucked over more by broken infrastructure than, uh, than otherwise. General lack of infrastructure. Start pulling some of these guys out. Let's uh, also grab. Uh, we, you got combined arms, expert and Gadarian. Oh, uh, dude, no, that's not the trade you wanted. Get some of these uh, other guys out of here. Uh, we do have. It looks like not a whole lot of supply over here either. We are green up here, though. 
I think this zone's like a big problem though. So let's just grab these guys out. Even back here, we're getting supply problems. Yeah. How bad is this now? Yeah, 178 over 108. Still can't get fuel. Which is gonna make our tanks completely ineffective. So we got this huge encirclement, but of course the AI shoves all their fucking troops in your supply zone so that it's not possible to close. Uh, although it looks like we do have some room now though. So we'll go take our easy money. we want uh, I think we're probably mostly good in all of this stuff for now to be honest might be worth it to switch your doctrine over I mean I guess we can get some of this other shit out know, whatever you have an ace cool And hopefully once this pocket's closed, we'll get some more leading edge and that'll help our supply on the front line in general. Now look at that. Look at those overruns. You'd love to see it. Alright, so we'll, we'll just take Moscow and then we'll call her, uh, call her quits for this game. We got a logistics company even excellent. Then yeah, we'll get the uh, we'll get the air superiority one here too. Maybe come up around this way. The train's a little bit better than going through the forest, I think. There we go. It's a nice, uh, nice pocket here. that off. Oh, ace pilot, I only got the nukes, wonderful. Now I prefer that those guys did not get reinforcements, we'll pin. Pin over here. Thankfully, they don't have level 10 ports on their, uh, their fucking capital. If we get across, get across, get across. Fuck, I should have been... Uh. Should have been there. Looks like we might be able to cross here anyways. Uh, this is much easier if you grind your general out in the game to have the uh, bridges, or what is it, the uh, improv expert traits. You have pontoon bridges ability to cross. The river's a lot easier. 
or if you have Amtrak's. Uh, but we don't have either of those things, so getting across rivers is a bit of a pain in the ass for us. Cast will help you with that, though, so it is nice that we at least have Cast. Uh, what else do we want here? I guess we can get whatever. Advanced rocket engines. Uh, maybe it looks like I can't I, I can't tell if there's a river there or not Let's maybe try pushing over that way By reserve this up with some uh, quick planning there to get ourselves some more attack bonus. I guess we'll go for this tile first because we can attack two furs into it. We'll go when we have full planning. And there is no river there, so that's great. I think we should be able to push through here. in there. We'll have these guys go join this attack then. We'll have these guys move in this way. I'll always bully our way to Moscow so we don't have to cross the river. It's more a Sonder Craft Fizurung. We're only attacking one to one, so uh, we don't need those guys to do that. I'll have you guys come this way instead. I would like to keep attacking Moscow. Let's grind her out. these two guys come over here and kill these guys. I was going to use them over here, but it looks like we don't need them. Alright, follow Moscow. Great. So I'm just going to make this uh, make a save game here. Alright, so... I hope it helps you out a little bit. Like, unfortunately, you're stuck in this position where you've got uh, you've got all these allied units over here sucking up your supply. Uh, there's not a whole lot you can do about that. You just have to kind of play around it. And you want to make sure that you're using your mobile units to like. We didn't really get a whole lot of big blobouts because of the supply situation. But when you can take the free space to hold a large amount of land, it's usually advantageous to do that. So that's what your mobile units are for. Stuff like your motorized and your light tanks. And then you just want to make sure you're concentrating your heavy tanks up and using them to attack in smart places. Uh, preferably not over a river uh, in order to uh, make these breakthroughs and go for your encirclements. And, uh, you know, as you can see, the AI, the AI kit doesn't really have anything that can stand up to our tank templates, even though they, are, uh, they aren't even modern. Uh, so I hope this helps you out. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Levy Freeman, signing out.